Hey everyone, welcome. Oh, did it collapse? <clears throat> hey everyone, welcome back to Practical Terrain. Today we are going to be making some of these super easy rubble piles. Uh, basically, like I said, these are just a walk in the park to make. It's foam bricks, you got some coffee stir sticks for wooden rubble and I just enhanced the look with some homemade pigments which you can check out in the top corner and all of that makes these into a great terrain piece for any war game I'm talking D&D you can use these as objectives you can use them as line of sight blockers you can use them in Warhammer any fantasy game you want even sci-fi depending on your setting um, these are just so useful and really reusable and the thing is they only take a couple minutes to make each um, I had a lot of experimentation with these but I think the end product came around great and you guys should be able to knock these out really easily and fast yourselves so without further ado let's get into the video and I'll show you guys how to make these super useful rubble piles for your war games Alright, so to start this project off, I just cut up a bunch of these stone bricks. Now, these are pretty simple to cut up. I just uh, used three different cuts and I marked them out in my Proxon to make things go a lot smoother. So first, I shaved off a thin piece from the end of a two inch sheet of XPS foam and then I cut that into two smaller sheets and then those I finally cut into the bricks so using that method I was able to get a ton of nice not completely uniform because I wasn't trying to be I kinda just went haphazard with it but I got a nice mix of bricks there and then I also made some bigger ones as well and th those should be good just to randomly make haphazard piles of bricks for the rubble piles now, all I need to do to finish the bricks is to just toss them in some rocks in a container and that should help round all the edges really easily and put some texture on them. And after that, they'll be good just to just stack them up and make some piles of rubble. To give these bricks some texture, I simply just found some sharp angular rocks, uh, gravel in this case, and shook them up. And as you can see, this is incredibly easy and it gives great results with a really nice texture. Alright, so the rock shaking technique worked insanely well. These are all really nicely textured like if you had done each one individually with an aluminum ball and all the corners are nice and rounded so they look really realistic now so I'm super happy with that how that turned out I've seen it done a million times in videos and I've never done it myself but it worked insane so I really like that and I'm definitely gonna use that again and the next step is I'm not quite sure what I want to do but I am thinking I'm going to put down some bricks and then lay over some hot glue and do it on some wax paper so it doesn't stick to the surface and kind of make a base of bricks and hot glue to build off of when I'm making these rubble piles. So that's going to be the next step and I'm going to get started with that.
Okay, so now that we have one of these rock piles done with the hot glue method, um, using sealing up the base, using all that hot glue to seal up the center, that worked. So now I'm going to make a bunch of the rubble piles using that, and that should be a good method to be both fast and easy. Um, don't worry about these hot glue. It's kind of all over. I, this one was a bit messy because it's my first one. But also we can fix that using our next step, which is going to be to put some grout and rubble in between the bricks to make them look more like realistic and like they came off a dirty battlefield. So that's next, and I just got to make a bunch of these rubble piles. Also, while I was making the rubble piles, I made some ruined wall sections. I used the same kind of bricks and the same hot glue method, um, but I did find that putting a bead of hot glue down on some wax paper and then laying out the bricks in order uh, really helped to get a nice foundation and then just building up on top of that. And the wax paper is easily removable so you don't get anything stuck to the bottom. Next, it was time to fill in the cracks by putting on some sand. I simply just painted some PVA glue into the cracks and then just dumped sand all over the piece. This was super easy and it made the bricks look a lot more weathered and realistic. So we got all these completely covered in sand and all the cracks are filled. There is basically no more hot glue visible and the little parts that are will, when they're painted, they won't be noticeable at all. So I'm just going to let this PVA glue and sand dry overnight and then we can come back in the morning. The next day, I continued on with the project by adding some broken coffee stir sticks with nice jagged edges to simulate some wooden rubble. Alright, so all of these rubble piles are all base coated and ready to go. So the next step is going to be, you know, painting them. So I'm going to be dry brushing with gray like I normally do. But I, I'm thinking for this paint scheme, I do want to change it up a bit. So I think I'm going to pick out some of the bricks with different shades of gray and maybe some tans as well. And I think that's going to give it a more rubble, kind of mismatched and haphazardly mixed bricks feel than like a neat stone castle or wall or something that could use all the same stone. So I think I'm going to do that on these. And then obviously I have to pick out all the boards and go into the crevices and see if I can get some of the sand with some brown or sandy color for the silt that's in between the bricks. So all that is next.
Okay, so these are all painted. It was kind of a tedious process, but eventually I got it all done. Just kind of alternated between the tan, the light gray, the darker gray, and then the kind of, uh, just kind of like the blue black color. And that kind of makes a nice variety in these rubble piles. And I think it will give them more of a like chaotic look. Uh, so now I want to tie everything together with a black wash and I'm really considering using some oil washes because I think that's going to be a nice high quality wash because that's definitely what you want on these because the wash is very important to make all these kind of like bright poppy colors bring them down a lot. So I think I might experiment with an oil wash on this one. This is my first time so I hope it goes well. So I just need to mix one of those up and try it out in this. Next, I dry brushed using a light gray and a dark gray. I went pretty heavy with these because like the black wash, these help tie together all the different colors of bricks that we used in the first step. All right, so these are all dry brushed and they're looking really nice, but we do still have to deal with the sand that is in between all the cracks of these bricks here. And it looks honestly a bit weird with just being painted gray. So I'm going to go back to the old pigments and I'm just gonna fill in all the cracks with these. I think that's gonna make this look a lot more realistic I've already tested it out on this one and it just looks so much better. That's what pigments will do. If you want to know how I made these pigments, I didn't actually spend a lot of money on brand pigments. I just grounded up some cheap pastels and I made a ton of different colors for a very good price. So check out the video in the top corner if you want to see that. But that's going to be the next step. All I need to do is just put pigments in all the cracks and make it look a lot more realistic. All right, so these are done and these are looking amazing. Honestly, with the pigments and then the matte varnish to seal them in, after all that, these just look absolutely perfect. Exactly what I was hoping for and more. I think these are gonna be a great tool for 
using in a variety of games, D&D and maybe Warhammer, Age of Sigmar and stuff like that. So these are going to be a very helpful tool to use on the gaming table. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making these roll piles here. And if you did, please go down below and subscribe, turn on notifications, hit the like if you like the video. And that's about it for today's video. I will see you guys next time.